Hi, I'm David Howard, writer, creator, and editor-in-chief of Raincross Press. And our newest title, Blood World, is coming soon. And you are watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, need day, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today in this brand new year with amazing and talented and creative people on Two Geeks Talking, of course, with another one-on-one -on -one interview that everyone has known and loved for the past 15 years. So who is our guest today? Our guest today is the editor-in-chief, as well as a writer for Raincross Press. He is a very talented individual at that. We'll get into what he's doing currently, of course, with his new series called Blood World. We're joined today by the ever-talented David Howard. How are you doing today? Great. How are you doing? I'm so happy to be here. So happy to kick off the new year. Let's do it. Let's have some fun because I always love new and talented people that come on the show and, and you're just the next one in a long line of people that have been on here in the past 15 years. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talk. My name is Dave Howard. I'm a writer primarily. I do do some video editing, but my primary creative outlet is writing and not only do i write comic books i also write novels and short stories and poetry i just had my first novel come out uh recently this month a horror novel called the long game uh my company rain cross press that i'm editor-in-chief of we're working on a new project called blood world and i have a comic book series out with another company as well asap imagination i'm keeping busy well, hey, it's better to be busy in, in a new year than it is to be just finding out what you want to accomplish. So I'm glad you're doing that. So tell yeah. us a little bit about Raincross Press and, and how that all came about. The name Raincross Press, it's named after the city I live in. I live here in Riverside in Southern California. It's, it's a moderately sized town east of Los Angeles. The symbol of our city is the Raincross. And if you look at our website that's uh, down there, raincrosspress.com, our logo is up there and it has a symbol of our city there. Originally, it was an imprint that I used uh, kind of a doing business as when I was writing. And uh, I had this idea for Blood Roll, which was really originally going to be a set of novels. I'm one of those people that loves to write history uh, and all the backstory of something. And I wrote over 200 pages of history for these novels, you know, over 500 years of history going back. And I was looking at it all and I was like, you know, I got a lot here. And I don't have a lot of time to do all these novels as I'm doing another novel series. I was like, you know, this would be really good as a graphic format. And there's so much here that it would kind of be wasted just on me. And I knew a bunch of other talented writers. And so I decided to expand it and they loved the idea. So we created this graphic magazine called Blood World that's going to come out. And that's how it got started. And then I was like, well, I need a way to, to get this out there. I did something I never thought I'd do. And I took the leap, turned Rain Cross into an LLC and actually publishing business. That's a big jump, especially when you're trying to realize a dream that you've had for a long time and that you've been successful in as well. Absolutely. It, it was scary. I'll be perfectly honest with everybody out there. It still is scary to a certain degree, but it's fun. It's a fun kind of scare. Well, let's talk about the, the team then that you have around with Blood World specifically, because originally when you signed up for this show, you wanted to have at least six people on. Time-wise, it would be a little tight. Who is on this team? Because you had so many amazing and talented people that I was like, oh, I recognize a lot of these names. And to be, to be perfectly honest with you, the team has just grown since then. Um, I guess I decided to jump in both feet in the deep end. I've always been inspired by magazines like 2000 AD and Heavy Metal, and that's really what we're kind of patterning ourselves after. My long-term vision of success would be to have something that's as successful as that. I know that is the goal, the bar way up here. That was the vision here is to have an anthology that has all these stories in the Blood World universe. So I brought in a number of writers first and we started writing stories and kicking around ideas. And I told them about my ideas. First to come in uh, was a group of people that I know through a podcast that we do. We do several podcasts for Comic Crusaders. That was David Taylor II, Jeff Bracey, and Steve Sellers. Those three, we've been associated with each other and friends with each other for several years now. And uh, I really respect them creatively. And they loved the whole idea. And then Steve introduced me to Mike Nunnally of Omen Comet, and we've gotten to be very good friends as well. And so Mike came in as well, and uh, I talked to him about it, and he was incredibly excited about this as well. And this is his first time writing for somebody else. They came in and started pitching ideas and pitching stories, and we kicked that around. We got that all going, and I've written several stories for the issue as well. It came time for artists, you know, and so the magazine right now is slated to be over 80 pages in length. One artist that would take a long time to do. Plus, one of the things I love about 2000 AD is that it always highlighted new artists, you know, lots of different art styles. And so we went out there and started interviewing and we've got 
people from all over the world. So we've got an artist who goes by the creative name Kostmeyer in the UK. We've got a artist studio, Sammy Crown Studios out of South Africa. We've got an artist named Brian Wilson, who's up in the Pacific Northwest. Jeff Racy is also an artist as well as being a writer, and he's illustrating his own story. We've got a number of different artists working on there. Our, our letterer is out of Argentina. So we're really a global operation here. So it's, it's pretty cool. A lot of people I talk with either find their their creative partners through Reddit, through online forums, through wherever they find them. And it's, it's a truly worldwide phenomenon, especially with uh, so many publishing companies that are, are coming, that have come on the show in the past as well, too. So find amazing talent where you can find it and pay them well and, and you'll be set. Absolutely. You know, and, and I have to say, it's, you know, one of my goals besides wanting to put out a successful magazine and be successful at this and grow it and, and get bigger and bigger is that one of the things I loved about 2000 AD is there always this showcase for new talent. And sometimes that talent stayed there and sometimes that talent went on to bigger and better things. And, you know, and it's, we've got some incredibly talented artists on this magazine, you know, this first issue. And if they go on to bigger and better stuff, I say, God bless, you know, I, I hope that you go on and be successful. Just don't forget about us, you know? So. so you always remember your first comic or your first creation that you've ever done here as well, too. You know, for yourself as a creative person that you are, whether it's as writing for prose or for comics, you know, what was the hardest part about being a writer? Is it the beginning, the middle, or the end of your process? I would definitely say it's the end. The beginning is difficult because to go from the idea phase to actually getting going, Sometimes for me, at least, it takes a little bit of kick in the butt because I could sit there and just ruminate on story ideas forever to actually sit down and start the work, getting it on the, the page, not dwelling on it. You know, sometimes I dwell on each word and it's like, no, I got to get it out of my head and onto the screen first. But the ending is the, the most difficult is, is really letting it go. Um, I, I can get very, um, you know, there's no other better way to put it. I get anal about trying to craft each word you know, and it's like at some point, you, you got to let that baby go and let it go out into the world and stand on its own. You know? so, <laughs> Your thesaurus can only help you so much, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Plus, you know, you drive editors crazy that way if you keep like doing that all the time. You know, eventually the editor's like, look, I, I've edited this thing about 20 times. You know, it's time to let this thing go. Revision 46B slash whatever, <laughs> you know. Uh, I changed this period to double space. Sorry, you know. Exactly. <laughs> then let's look at the world of Blood World. From the images I've seen and, and synopsis I've been able to read as well, it looks like a sci-fi epic. It looks like kind of Blade Runner-esque. But tell us what Blood World is all about. Originally, it was called Blood World because my original novels were going to be set around this one group within the universe called the Soul Scientific Symposium. And everything about this particular group, they are trying to perfect humanity through genetic engineering. And their whole civilization is based around the moons of Saturn and things like that. So it was called Blood World because it was like Gadiga on steroids, you know, if you're familiar with that movie. In order to flesh out the world that I was building around, I created different other organizations. I needed to figure out what was going on on Earth and why there was a group of people out on Saturn. So I started writing all the backstory. The name stuck around Blood World, but the focus definitely shifted. So there's three main, their protagonists and antagonists, three power players, the Terran Federation, which is the old Earth, S3 around Saturn and the Ganymede Monarchy around Jupiter. And it is Blade, Blade Runner, but it's also very much, you know, I think the best way I can describe it is if you took Game of Thrones and combined it with Dune and put in some elements of Blade Runner and Gattaca, you got a pretty good idea of what's going on. It really is a sci-fi epic where some of the stories deal with very high level maneuvering and politics and things that are happening on a solar system scale. While some of the stories are really focusing on individuals and they're getting by in life in what is current year 2587 and how they're living and the different circumstances they find themselves in these different places in the solar system. The tagline I gave our writers when writing was 300 billion people live in blood world and there's 300 billion stories we could tell. Go find one and tell it. Sounds like my tagline I use for the show. Everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. I was going to say, I won't, I won't file a copyright <laughs> thing, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> The words are definitely powerful. And in, speaking of which, what was the first time you experienced where language had power? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I think it was the first time I really got that. <laughs> and this is going to be funny. I always loved poetry. When I was in high school, 
I fell in love with Elizabethan sonnets. I'm, I'm a weirdo. I like writing an iambic pentameter and following a format for Elizabethan sonnets and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to get this one girl to go out with me and I wrote her a love poem an Elizabethan sonnet and it worked, you know? So I was like, wow, you know, the whole poetry thing does work sometimes, you know, but uh, you know, and I, and I say that with a, you know, tongue in cheek, it really is true. I mean, there were other times I could say before that uh, I wrote my first published horror story for a school publication when I was nine and I legitimately scared my mom and dad with the story. You know, I'm a I'm surprised I wasn't in psychological counseling. But what was the title of that, if you can recall? Uh, the Curse of Talkwitz. It's a local Native American legend around here. Um, I'm Native American. I love that kind of stuff. And there's a mountain out here called Talkwitz Peak, and it's named after an evil spirit in their um, tradition. Uh, several landmarks that have what looks like a face in it and stuff. And so I wrote this whole story about settlers coming to California, and they encountered the curse of Talkwitz and stuff like that. And it didn't end well for the settlers. So <laughs> I'm sure it was justifiable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what's the wisest piece of advice or what's the most bullshit piece of advice that you've ever received that has stuck with you? But what's the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in your journey as a creative person? Wow. I got to think about that one as a creative. I've gotten a lot of good advice as a business person. As a creative, I think I got to give it to my mom all the way back in high school. I was writing a story and it was a novel and I had written something and she had read it and she's like, this doesn't sound like you. And I said, well, you know, no one's going to want to read it if I write the way I want to write. And I hadn't even thought about this until you just brought this up. I hadn't thought about this a long time. And she told me, you need to write what you want to write the way you write it and then let the chips fall where they may. And that was probably some of the best creative advice I've ever gotten. Taking criticism is, I think it's important. You know, I, I love when people criticize my stuff because it allows me to analyze. And that's the third best piece of advice is my wife always tells me it's not about you. She's like, you know, check your ego at the door. My wife is probably my hardest critic and I appreciate it. Write the stuff that you want to write the way you want to write it. And then be open to feedback, be open to criticism, you know? So those you know, number two and three are probably the biggest things and, and have been huge because it's easy to have a thin skin sometimes when you're creative, it really is. And that's a hard part. You know, most people out there, when they criticize your work, they're doing it because they have an honest comment to give you. So as a business owner then, uh, what challenges are you currently facing that you will succeed in 2023? I think the biggest one is dealing with this very, diverse, diverse as far as location, group of people all over the world and trying to manage and get all of these people together. It feels like I'm hurting cats sometimes <laughs> and, and it's not their fault. It's just that people are all over the place. The hardest thing that I've had to deal with in the last two months is navigating the international banking system mm. so that I can pay people internationally and not be on the radar of the FBI and the IRS. So <laughs> that is was a definite challenge. I mean, just just to pay a couple artists, it took me half a day just to figure out what I was doing and how to get it all set up. It's pretty crazy. The hoops you had to jump through. It got taken care of. I was ready to, to go and, and, and have that break you were talking about with the alcohol and or weed. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Being a creative person aside, they already see our, our search history. I mean, banking is the least of their concerns, I think. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He's looking yeah. up carpentry and space travel again. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> or in my case, since I, I tend to write horror stories that combine with detective stuff, I'm also looking up like ways to murder people, you know. Like my latest book is like, how quickly does Hemlock kill somebody? And it's like, oh, well, well what is this person doing? So, I guess the FBI needs to play a game. Is this an FBI flag, red flag or is this a creative person search engine? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so the creative journey of Blood World is a more recent endeavor. But looking back at some of your other works, what are three works that you've created that you're proud of and what are three things in the future you're looking forward to accomplishing one of the most recent things my first comic book title i had never really set out to be a, a comic book writer to be perfectly honest with you. i was contacted by paul hayden who runs asap imagination to help him develop basically the bad guys for his world and a lot of that was because of my background of where I went to school, my background in government. So I helped him develop some agencies there. And he saw what I was doing. He's like, hey, you want to write a comic book title about this? And I do love comic books. I used to review comic books and got out of that once I started writing comic books. I said, yeah, sure. 
And so I started writing OPSEC. And when that came out, that was absolutely incredible. You know, so that's one thing I'm really proud of. The novel is a lifelong dream. I've actually written 10 novels over the years that I've thrown away to my wife's chagrin. I wrote them and then jettisoned them. And this time she was actually, you see, like, no, this thing is not going away. You're publishing it. You're getting it out there. Getting it out there and actually seeing it in print is the fulfillment of basically a dream since I was five. I used to fill out these things for school all the time. It's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a writer. Having a novel to me is like saying suddenly I'm an adult, you know, so it's weird. Uh, the third thing was the first time that I was ever published. And that goes all the way back to that horror story when I was nine years old. And to see that something I wrote could actually affect people, that people were like legitimately scared by it. And I, I guess that's a weird thing to say, but I was happy that I scared people, but I was, you know, so it's really strange. And any psychiatrist out there, you can probably send me an email at raincrosspress.com. Blood World coming out is one, you know, so right now um, we're going to be having the campaign is starting at the end of January and getting that first issue out. And then this particular title to be quarterly. Second is I'm working on a young readers series. The first series is to be three young reader books about business women you've never heard of. And I think it's really cool. One of them, the lady who founded uh, Pepperidge Farms and why she founded it. It's just an incredibly cool story. And, and I want kids to be able to read this and hear about these people that they never heard about. Her story is amazing. Uh, she stood up to big corporations in the government when they tried to take her company from her. And she did it all to provide for her son who was sick. So just an incredible lady. So I'm looking forward to working on that. And then three is that, you know, once Blood World and Raincross get off the ground and we get going, my next step there is that we really want to do some sort of toy line or something like that to go with our Blood World figures, you know, so I'm looking forward to that. I've already started planning for that, but that's probably a couple of years in the future. It's never too early to, to start planning for that kind of stuff. Everyone has one person in their life that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to apologize to my dad. But I'm going to have to say my mom. You know, she got me started at reading at a very early age. I started reading at three and she started me on, on Token at six. And then it was, you know, Brave New World in 1984 and, and on from there, you know, and, and it just spiraled out of control. And love of reading led to love of writing. All of that got started with my mom, you know, introduced me to the written word. And my dad was always giving me that stuff as well. But my mom is the big sci-fi slash fantasy nerd in our house. From a professional standpoint, you've created a new business with Raincross Press. You are a talented writer, and now you've dipped your toes into the wide world of comics as a writer as well, too, creating Blood World with many amazing, talented people. So professionally, you're successful in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? I would say I'm a success in training. I'm always learning new stuff, which is great. Frustrating sometimes. You know, I think one of the things that's a good and a bad for me is that I'm never satisfied. You know, it's like I'll be satisfied for a little bit and then I want to do the next thing. And so it drives me. Sometimes I got to sit back and be like, whoa, you know, this year, you know, I have to take stock of, you know, what I've accomplished this year. And it was a lot. That just means that I want to do more next year. So bigger and better things, but I got to sit back and enjoy the stuff that I've done as well. So, yeah. So I see a success in training. That, that's a new one. I haven't heard success in training before. So <laughs> that's good. I like that. Thanks. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? I take it really, really personal. For that reason, I got to give all the credit to my incredible wife, who's just an incredible partner, friend, and person who can kick me in my ass when I, she needs to. One of her favorite sayings to me is, get over yourself. It's not about you. Whenever things go wrong and I feel like I'm way too hard on myself, she'll let me get it out of my system and then get me going again when I need to get, get going. You know, we've been married uh, 26 years and I am incredibly lucky that I met her and that uh, she is my friend and my wife. I have to say that. And that's the honest to God truth. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's as a writer or a comic book creator of some kind, or maybe starting their own business, who knows? How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I think the best way that you can inspire the generation that follows you is to get out there and not only build upon the success of the people who came before you, but lay the groundwork and open the door for the next generation to follow. So, you know, early in the interview, I talked about how one of the things I'm looking forward to is getting these artists in here and writers in here. And if they go on to bigger and better things, so be it. And I think that can be difficult sometimes, you know, especially for 
people that want to be successful that are driven you want to hold on to it you know and and sometimes we want to be greedy you know we want more for ourselves and and that's fine to want personal stuff but at some point some point i'm gonna you know to leave this world you know and it's like and then then the next generation is going to step up i think helping the next generation come up and be successful and then build on the things i've done not only does it help them, it builds on your legacy as well, because you've been a mentor to them. You've been a facilitator to them. I do have to say, I get a lot of credit for that from my time when I was in the military, because you're always moving up. And if you don't train the people under you to be able to take your place, then the whole system fails. You know, you really learn to train those leaders, to train those people to be able to move up into your position as you're being trained by the people above you to move up as well. So that was a valuable lesson I learned when I was in the military. If your life was a book or a comic book, what would its title be? And because I like music, what would its soundtrack be? Oh, wow. I, I think the title of the, the comic book, and it would be in the style of Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency by the great Douglas Adams. It would be the Zen of Being Me. Because I have not often found myself where I intended to go, but I've always found myself where I needed to be. So uh, that is basically the story of my life. The soundtrack, it would be a lot of my playlists, which would be an eclectic mix of music from everything from rap to heavy metal to classical music, and with a little bit of show tunes thrown in as well. So <laughs> We have similar tastes. Uh, awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, did you do you have your towel available as well? Just saying. Like, uh, yes, I do. It's always ready to go. You know, so <laughs> but don't panic right on the front. <laughs> That's the tagline on the insert in the forward there. Don't panic. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> well, David, I do hate to say, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. It was a blast. Uh, I had a great time, and it's always fun to find somebody who enjoys Douglas Adams as much as I do. So before I let you go, where can we find you and how can we support not only yourself, but Rain Cross Press and, and the other talented people you have working with, of course, your amazing series. Instagram and Twitter. You can find my personal uh, social media is at Nemesis FC2. Long story short, that is a soccer team I used to play on. The official Instagram, Twitter and Facebook accounts for Rain Cross Press are at Rain Cross Press, just the way it's spelled down below. If you go to Indiegogo starting January 30th, Campaign for Blood World is kicking off on January 30th. Really looking forward to that. Come check it out. And just a real quick plug, if I could, our initial tier for Blood World is you will get 86 pages of Blood World plus two free comic books from uh, various creators that have donated the comic books to us. So you'll get over 120 pages of content for 10 bucks digitally. Come check it out. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others quite literally on our website, tgtmedia.com or our more updated website, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. We do have our podcast back as of this year, which is uh, all of 2022 is uploaded currently. Our Two Geeks Talking dot podbean.com you can find it on every single streaming service available and as i say every week everyone has a story to tell it's up to me to help bring that out thanks for listening and watching on two geeks talking